Director Ray, I'm deeply concerned that the FBI and the Department of Justice have become thoroughly politicized. I think this is a problem that began during the Obama administration. I think it metastasized with career officials during the Trump administration, and I think it continues and is even worse today under the Biden administration. I don't believe you personally reflect that politicization, but I think you've been unwilling to root it out and unwilling to hold people accountable for the politicization. I hear regularly from FBI agents and from professionals at the Department of Justice who are dismayed that our law enforcement has been weaponized and politicized rather than remaining apolitical as it has been for the history of our country. Yesterday, it was reported that Project Veritas had obtained a copy of an FBI training material which listed various symbols and themes which in the FBI's estimation were indicative of, quote, militia violent extremism. Now, these symbols weren't things like the Ku Klux Klan or the Nazi Party, which naturally would be symbols of that. But instead, they included, rather astonishingly, patriotic symbols of our nation and our history. Included on this list is the Betsy Ross flag. Now, that's fairly remarkable that the Betsy Ross flag in the FBI's indication is indicative of violent of militia violent extremism, because among other people who have been publicly alongside the Betsy Ross flag, we have President Barack Obama, who was sworn in directly underneath two Betsy Ross flags. But it's not just President Obama. We also have President Biden, who was sworn in under Betsy Ross flags. It's not just the Betsy Ross flag. Also on this list is the Gadsden flag as a symbol of violent extremism. Now, the state of Virginia has a license plate for the Gadsden flag, as do many other states. I think people would be astonished to find that having that license plate, the FBI indicates that you're a violent extremist. Also included on this is a text that I was particularly struck, is the Gonzales battle flag. Come and take it. As indicative of being a violent extremist militia, well, I will self-report right now that every day in the Senate I wear my boots that have the Gonzales battle flag on the back of them. Director Ray, what are y'all doing? This makes no sense. Do you, do you agree with this FBI guidance that the Betsy Ross flag and the Gadsden flag and the Gonzalez battle flag are signs of militia violent extremism? Well, Senator, I, I'm not familiar with the particular document you have behind you, uh, and I'm not in the practice of trying to comment on documents that I haven't uh, recognized, but I will tell you that when we put out intelligence products, including ones that reference symbols, which we do across a wide variety of contexts, we usually uh, make great pains, take great pains to put uh, caveats and warnings in the document that make clear that a symbol alone is not considered evidence of violent extremism. Uh, and it's Well, but Director Ray, you don't on. include things like Antifa, you don't include things like Black Lives Matter. Instead, you identify patriotic Americans as suspect. And I would note there's a pattern of this. As you're aware, the National Association of School Boards asked the Attorney General to investigate parents as domestic terrorists under the Patriot Act. Now, it did so because it was upset about moms and dads coming to school boards and disagreeing with the policies of those schools. Five days after that letter, the Attorney General sent a memo to you directing the FBI to target parents for investigation. Since that time, the National Association of School Boards has apologized for the letter because it was so indefensible, but that hasn't stopped the FBI. In fact, you created a specific threat tag directed at parents. So let me ask you, how many moms and dads who have spoken up at school boards has the FBI interviewed or investigated since the memo from the Attorney General? Well, first off, I'll say I'm not aware of any, but second, let me address the issue. You're not aware of any? Like yes, the House of Representatives has you, written you and asked you, would you let me, If you would let me. So please answer. Please. Uh, let me say to you and to this committee, the same thing I said to every FBI field office after I read the memo, which was that the FBI is not going to be in the business of investigating speech or policing speech at school board meetings or anywhere else, uh, and that we're not about to start now, that threat violence, threats of violence, that's a different matter altogether, and there we will work with our state local partners as we always have. So, Director Ray, about Director, Ray, Director Ray, our time is, do you know how many parents you have interviewed or investigated since that, that memo? I am aware that we have had a small number of assessments, which is less than an investigation, and a few full investigations. Not hold on. Hold so how on, many? Hold, hold on. Hold, let me finish. I, I'm just. I'm asking you a question. That, time is limited. I don't know the number, but that not. Okay, well, well, but wait, let me finish. That are not necessarily of parents 
we have individuals who have made threats against a variety of people, sometimes school board officials, sometimes other okay, people as Director well. Director Ray, I, I will point out the House of Representatives has sent you oversight letters detailing dozens of investigations under a threat tag directed at parents, parents, moms and dads who GMED have come in because they spoke out against mass mandates or vaccine mandates or critical race theory, and suddenly the G-men show up. And this was after the Attorney General claimed it wasn't happening. And so the pattern, sadly, we've seen, you say you don't know how many there are, the follow-up will be, I'll send you a letter, and you'll send back a letter that says, I refuse to answer.